I want to bring in clinical psychologist at the Lagos University Teaching Hospital, Juliet Oto, to talk to us about the mental and emotional awareness of this war. Dr. Oto, thank you for making the time to be with me this morning. Good morning, Amara. It's a pleasure. Good morning, Nigerians. Now, at the start of this war, the concern was the number of people being displaced, uh, the refugee situation at the border, how many people were uh, displaced, having nowhere to go, but needing to go because they could die, they stayed. Uh, we'd also discussed the mental health of these refugees. And now for those left in Ukraine, uh, many are hearing, you know, these rocket missiles hitting residential buildings. No one knows who's next. They're also watching neighbors and friends die around them. How do you think that these images impact on the people still living in these war zones? Okay. The mental health of adolescents, uh, we must take into cognizance, most especially the mental health of adolescents and young adults, which are at risk during this uh, Ukraine and Russia invasion war. The individuals who are affected by this high rate, uh, risk of mental health complications, they are, these are the, mainly the adolescents and young adults. And some of this, they could come up with a risk of mental health complications, including PTSD, anxiety, and depression. They are mainly affected by this war because some of the um, majority of those children, they've seen damages, of, like you had said, damages of their properties, valuable assets, death of those family members. Some families are being displayed, uh, displaced. I beg your pardon. And because, uh, especially for the Ukrainians, they were not mentally prepared. They didn't have a mental preparedness for this disaster. And uh, for the young adolescents, they'll have a negative view of coping, coping skills, which they may result to using some of those psychoactive substances, which are likely to adversely affect their mental health. It, it could be even those, uh, the combat and the non combat which are civilians and soldiers. So nobody's immune. The way in which they... Um, Embrace those stress reactions to some of these will lead to other psychological symptoms that are commonly uh, available after any war. No, please go on. Please go on. Okay. okay. And some of those psychological impact will have massive uh, concerns. We are mainly concerned with the individuals that are still left in those communities because is to affect the way they reason, and some of them will begin to have flashbacks, daytime dreams. And adolescents, because they are adolescents, they are unable to communicate some of those things. They bottle them up, and it, they grow up into it becomes a generational PTSD for them, post traumatic stress disorder for them. So it's important that those moments, those that are still there, that are displaced, I think it's uh, high time that they are being brought together, try to educate them and begin to give them support so that they don't actually feel to have a more mental breakdown. Yeah, um, uh, Julius, I think something's wrong with my earpiece. I could hardly hear, you know, the last few things that you said. But no one ever considers the mental health of the leaders who are strategizing and making the decisions, you know, in this war. For instance, President Zelensky himself, who's been making videos every night since this war, assuring his people, you know, trying to tell them uh, that things will be, that they're winning the war and also addressing, uh, you know, different uh, world leaders around the world and addressing different bodies and different fora, what are you reading from his body language, his tone, and from your professional experience, what could he be going through mentally? Okay. For any, for any war of choice, uh, the leaders who are involved, they have, they have, they, they, they've weighed up their potential for losses and gains. And for Putin, I think uh, cognitive psychology tells us that human subjects are loss averse. Putin's decision making I've asked him to undermine this theory. For him, he's not saying that he's going to make losses. He's seeing himself that he's going to make so much progress, he's going, that he's going to yield so much progress for Russia. For, for Putin, Putin has, uh, he saw Russia as an inauthentic and imperial, uh, imperial state. And that's a distorted version that he had of um, Ukraine. The invasion of Russia and uh, Ukraine, it will cost many lives, which is already doing, and it will inflict, like I said at the beginning, it will inflict traumas on both countries, not just the Ukraine, uh, Ukrainians alone, but also the Russians. So he should not be oblivious of that. 
And uh, he's just for um, the kind of behavior he's putting up psychologically. One would look at him as one that has a racist personality. He's a trait, though, because it has not been diagnosed to say he has a, a racist, a narcissistic personality disorder. For him, he has a troubled it's already been known that he has a troubled uh, relationship with other countries of the world, and he's trying to shield himself from the isolation and sanctions that has already been imposed on Russia. He's trying to feel as if those sanctions are not hitting him. Because of that high level of hostility and lack of empathy, he's trying to shield himself from all of that, thinking, oh, he's trying to post to the world that he's not being affected, but I'm sure deep down in him he's been affected because he was believing he was a superior and he was belittling uh, Ukraine. But from the look of things, other well, the countries of the world tend to support him Ukraine, and that is actually taking a toll on Russia. You're talking about the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, right? Uh, because I'd asked about... Yeah, uh, yes. Yeah, I'd ask about yes. Zelensky, the Ukrainian president. Um, uh, you, you know, Russia seems to be getting the upper hand in this war, and Ukraine has been begging for weapons, you know, all of this time. Um, once again, about uh, President Zelensky, what do you think he's, he's thinking? What do you think he's going through mentally as, as you know, this war progresses? For him, he never envisaged that uh, something like this was going to come up and it was going to escalate to this point. Maybe he wasn't, the preparedness wasn't there mentally. So he, he's trying to, for him, he didn't see all of this coming. So he'll be going through stress, some stress reactions which are not open to the public. But I, I would think for him now, he needs to take psychological uh, evaluation for emotional stability because he, might not, he may not be emotionally stable for now seeing all of these that are happening. Hmm. What could be the effects of going through long periods of conflict? What kind of you know, reactions are exhibited when someone has gone through uh, a war like the one going on in Ukraine? It's mainly traumatic, especially for those, like I said at the beginning, combat and not combat. It's the traumatic experiences from a psychological point of view. Some of them will develop PTSD possibly. Some will develop other and, um, mental health condition, anxiety, and depression. So it's important that at those moments that some of those things are being looked into and uh, quick, quick response are being put in place. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Juliet Otto, a clinical psychologist at the Lagos University Teaching Hospital, for speaking with us this morning. It's a pleasure.